got some store covered ingredients. I don't know why I'm chatting like that. Anyway, hi, I'm Sal Henley. I'm from the Slimming World Golden Bus Tour that hopefully some of you came to join last summer. It was a great event and it was so lovely to see all our members. We're now obviously at home with our families. I'm in my sister's kitchen and I have a little film crew here as well. They're all my nieces. I've got Lucy, Emma and Sophie and they're behind the mobile phones that are filming this. And what we're gonna do is some great store cupboard sort of cooking recipes. So we're gonna go into the fridge, see what we can find there, into your store cupboard. And those freezers that you've got loads of stuff in that you never use, you're gonna be doing that. So. Uh, obviously you're going to the virtual groups pretty much every week, uh, which is great, but we want to add something else to it. So let's get started and let's cook up an easy chicken curry. What we're going to do is we're going to make it from the four sort of key basic ingredients that you use to make a curry. So we've got an onion here, we've got garlic, ginger, and we've got a chilli. I'm gonna show you a quick tip on ginger. When you come to peel it, don't use a peeler, just use a teaspoon like that, and you just drag it away from you, and over the knobbly bits, it sort of just removes them automatically. And then it's really quick and easy, just chop that end off, and then you can grate it. So quick little tip. And then tomato puree in it as well. It's three tablespoons of tomato puree. Two tablespoons of medium curry powder, but if your family like a cooler one, go for korma curry powder. Then we've got six skinless chicken breasts that I've just diced up into bite-sized pieces. And this is 200 grams of baby spinach. But if you haven't got spinach, you can use kale or frozen spinach would be amazing as well. Or you know when you get a bag of salad, like watercress spinach and um, what else has it got? Rocket leaves, you could chop that up and put that in. And then this is coriander and uh, it's 100 grams or mils of natural yogurt. Try and get the Greek yogurt, that's 0% fat, because it will hold up better in the heat of the cooking. So then we'll get cooking. So I've got a non-stick saute pan. It's one of my favorite pans, because you can cook great family meals in it. And then I'm gonna add what I call the sort of holy trinity of a curry, which is the garlic. So we've got three cloves of garlic crushed there. Then we've got a five centimeter piece of root ginger. And then that's one red chilli. I just deceded it because my family prefers it a bit cooler. And then this is a, a large um, onion. And then that's just a chicken stock cube that's crumbled. So you put all of that into the pan. And it's just going to sizzle a little bit, which is great. Then what we're going to do is add in about four tablespoons of water. It doesn't have to be accurate at all. You just give that a stir. And then we're just gonna pop the lid on and that will just simmer for about 10 minutes till it cooks down. And then we're gonna take the lid off it and start to caramelize the onions. And that will happen with the natural sugars that are present in the onions. So we don't need to add any fat to it. I don't know why I'm jumping in, but I am. Hi, uh, we're going back to this. This is the onion. This is taking about 10, 15 minutes. Look how lovely and golden that is. And I've just done that with water. So just keep adding bits of water as you go and it will soon really caramelize up like that. It's important you get it to that stage so we get lots of flavor into the curry. Then we're going to add in some curry powder. So this is just medium curry powder, like I said before. And again, if you want it hotter, go for a madras curry powder, but we're just going medium. Uh, there we go. A little higher than a couple of tablespoons, but don't worry about it. Uh, then this is tomato puree. We're gonna do three tablespoons of that, like so. I'm actually measuring it this time. I mean, who knew? I'm not very good at measuring stuff in the mind, so I just do it by eye normally. But here we go. I'm following the instructions. And we're gonna just give that a good stir so we can bring that all together. And that's just cooking out a little bit. It's good to cook that out because it's quite raw otherwise with the uh, curry powder. And you don't want that sort of grainy taste at all when you eat it. Also, if you want to freeze this, this is the perfect time to freeze it without the chicken in it. So you can make lots of this paste, then divide it up um, into quantities that were served for. And then you can pull it out of your freezer as and when you need it. So you can see now that's sort of cooked down a little bit and cooked out. Then we're gonna add the chopped chicken. So this is 
six skinless chicken breasts that I've just cut up into mad side pieces. And you just stir that around in there. Just give that a good stir. And then we're just gonna add the remaining water into that. So in total, it's meant to be 200 mils of water. And we added four tablespoons earlier on when we were cooking the onions. So you just add in about 150 mils. It's about 140, 50 mils. So you just pour that over the top. And you don't need to brown the chicken at this stage. Then you just give that a good stir. And what that does is gives it a lovely kind of juice that it can cook in, which will take about 15 minutes to cook that. So we just give that a stir. Then we put the lid on leave it for 15 and we'll come back. So this is the chicken curry after 15 minutes. So you can see it's beautifully cooked and lots of lovely juice has come out from the chicken as well. So we're gonna put on 200 grams of baby leaf spinach. If you haven't got baby leaf spinach, don't worry. If you've got some frozen in the freezer, that is great or even kale or something like savoy cabbage you could shred up and add in there. Now there's gonna be a lot of heat in that pan, so you don't need to do much apart from put a lid on and let that wilt down. That will be easy to do. So while we're doing that, let's talk about mango chutney. Mango chutney is great, and uh, of course you can have that, but you have to build that into your food optimizing plan. What you could do and have as a free food is have a mango chutney with it that you make. So it's fresh, um, ripe mango, you chop that up, add in a bit of red onion that's chopped up, some chili maybe, a bit of lime, a good squeeze of lime, and some coriander would work really well. And then you've got a really lovely fresh complement. It's also hitting the boxes of a third of your plate being full of salad or vegetables. We're just gonna let that cook for another couple of minutes so that it'll steam and compress down and we'll come back to it. So that's a couple of minutes, let's just take that off. You can see that that's wilted down now, so you just need to stir that through. And look at all that lovely spinach through there. You could add things like some peas in there if you wanted to, frozen peas, even some can of sweet corn, why not? Um, we're gonna take that off the heat, leave it for five minutes, and then you stir through 100 mils of low fat or 0%, that's what I should say, 0% Greek yogurt.